for me, what sociology offers is an imaginative way of thinking about the world, a way of thinking about the world that enables us to see it from different angles, from different perspectives. And we can use that sociological imagination in collecting data in a whole range of different ways. That can be applying imagination to research questions for large-scale surveys, to the analysis of large-scale surveys, or it can be about doing a life history interview and everything in between. I genuinely believe that, that the world is impoverished if we don't understand it in, in social terms. So if we don't understand how we got to be the way we are, um, socially as well as um, genetically and in all the other ways that, that people say we need to understand ourselves. A very early influence on me becoming a sociologist was the magazine New Society, which I started reading when I was about 16. New Society ceased to exist as a magazine in 1988, um, sadly. And it's been, it's been a gap, really, and for quite some time, myself and my colleague John Holm would have talked about how we could fill that space. So we've developed and manage an online journal called Discover Society, which is trying to um, encourage researchers of all kinds, not just in universities, but people with ideas and data, to publish things that are accessible to a wider public, so accessible and interesting to everybody from school students to the government. One of the important things that sociology does is question everything, not in order just to undermine it, but in order to, to look at it from different, different angles. If you take something like, like marriage, um, we, we've had all sorts of discussion, different discussions, different positions over the over the centuries about who should be married, who should be married to who, what age should people get married, um, that society would fall apart if people didn't get married, you know, now we have the possibility of gay marriage. You know, as a, as a sociologist with a specific interest in gender and sexuality, I can look at that historical sweep and say, well, what did that mean in those particular social contexts at different points in time? And what you know? How do we understand where we are now in relation to, to both the past and where we might want to go in the future? For me, social 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 science's biggest challenge is is really to enable people to understand what the social is. We've 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 lived live in a world where actually people think less and less about the social and about society. So we, we kind of live in a world at this point in time where the focus is very much on individuals, individuals and markets. One thing that I really think it should be doing is enabling people to understand that the whole is more than the sum of the parts, so that in any context, people operating together, whether that's in a, a couple, a family, an organisation, a, you know, a small community, a city, wherever, that there's something over and above just the sum of, of individuals that creates all, all kinds of complexity. It's intrinsic to being human that we have the capacity to reflect and to criticise and to think about why we do what we do. And social science methodology enables us to do that on a, on a large scale, on a big canvas.